Hello, questers. What's happening out there for our Wednesday podcast? Oh, my lordy. You got about 40 comments in here already. You guys beat me in here? Unbelievable. And with me from Canada with a professional synopsis coming up shortly is Judy. Hello, Judy. Hello, John. Hi, everybody. It is good to be here tonight. I am a bit hoarse. I am getting over this darn cold. So uh, it is me that you're listening to. And I think we are going to have a great podcast tonight. Yeah, I got over 100 screenshots. And um, also tonight, hashtag hat. You got to be in the YouTube StreamYard chat. If you put hashtag hat in Facebook, you're not going to be in the running above the header where it says i'm live hit that stream yard link it would just ask you for your name and your profile picture that's it and then you can put a hashtag hat to be eligible for a free quest hat as long as they remain here we go judy okay john here we go gloria uh, Renee and Gary, I hope you're doing okay, Gary. I'm watching you. And David, I made him made him and his wife famous today. We'll show the short video of his trip today he made to Oak Island down the causeway. I thank him so much. We're always dying for some kind of new photos of something of Oak Island, Judy, you know. We are. And I thank you, Dave, so much. And I'm looking forward to meeting your wife. Hello, Patricia. I got to make him famous, you know what I mean, Judy? Yes, definitely. (laughs) Where are we going here? Dave, 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 Renee. Betty Robinson, hello. Thank you so much for rejoining and upgrading on the YouTube membership side. I appreciate a thousand percent. There's Jeff M. I'm so behind in the statements, uh, Judy. They, there was 38 of them before I. There's the professor, Daniel Spino. Hello, Linda. Hello, Luann. Hello, Julie Neal. Hello, Jan. Scottish Diggers in the house. Ooh, welcome. Gregory. Neal's in the house. John is here. I think I caught up on the comments so far. We're so far behind, uh, Judy. Yeah, well, I don't think there's any catching up. By the way, I haven't picked you up on Facebook yet. So, guys, I'm I'm on YouTube for now. Yeah, that's all right. Do what you got to do. <clears throat> don't forget, hashtag hat for the people and the new people that haven't won one. I want to make sure everybody that's in my live podcast after a while We'll get one. You know, Judy, it's process of elimination. After a while, if you go on there and you win one tonight and you already had one, we'll redraw. So everybody in the live chat should have a chance to get one, you know? Right, exactly. And I'm I'm hoping that uh, someone gets it tonight that really wants it. Yep, yep. I think, I think everybody wants it, though. Yep, hello, Tammy Hurst. <clears throat> All right, let me thank my YouTube... Uh, membership, paying membership, and our two that are on uh, Patreon. I posted a couple of things on Patreon. I keep that up to date. If anybody wants to go over, there's some people that are just joining free, which they can see the statements because I can put in for people, to, everybody to see it, uh, for paid members to see it, for portions to see it. So there are some things I put in there that everybody can see. So we do have free members there, but maybe after a while, maybe they'll join. You know, and donate five dollars or something. Maybe we don't know. We got to see. 
Right. You never know, John. Yep. People are good. All righty. Got to thank Betty, like I said, who just rejoined. I thank her so much. And Mark and Tammy and Luke and Patricia and Sandra and Sideways. David, of course. Blacksburg Football. Caroline, Super, Becky, Wayne, Alina, Nelson, Paul, Carol, Virginia, Gary, Rebecca, Barbara, Starlene, I hope she's doing okay, Jeff M., Sand Dollar, and Roxy. Also, Joanne and Hardaby. I thank them so much. And also, I thank Judy for what she does. She's on the podcast, doing her synopsis. She's always with, with me live. It's very hard to find somebody to do that, to be at live with you. And I appreciate you doing the co-hosting with me on Wednesday's podcast. Thank you so much, Judy. Oh, you're so welcome, John, and I love it. Wouldn't give it up for anything. You're stuck with me. Yep. I've got to thank uh, Daniel, the professor, the factual professor. I mean, we're just the, I'm just the middleman, you know, to believe or not, but they have the most accurate information that I know of, and he partnered up with uh, Charlotte. So trying to get and cut the chase and get right to the factual things and the scientific stuff more than all the rumors and hearsay. You know what I mean, Judy? Right, exactly. And Daniel and Charlotte are right on. I look forward to reading their, uh, yep. their uh, post every week. Yep. Hello, Ben Zob and Carol. You want to win a hat? You got to let StreamYard use your profile, name, and picture. That's all they take. Nothing else. I want to thank David Burroughs and his wife today for letting me have permission to show the world. And we got to still pray for Osprey Muyan, hoping that that comes back in the spring to give us some bird's eye view of what they're doing on the island. I'm going to post the video from October 3rd because now they're about in the September range, Judy, that they're showing us pictures on. Right. And uh, artifacts, and it's around September. So I showed you the one in September when we saw all the plywood down on the swamp, remember? Yes, clearly. And uh, so this one was the last video Muyan did. It'll be October. So we'll take a look at that towards the end. Um, and then we'll post the, uh, the hat giveaway. Okay, sounds good. Did you read what Daniel said? He said, can I put my name in for the hat? And then pick who is most deserving to get one. Just one. <laughs> yeah, he's driving me crazy. <laughs> You'll have to ask the boss that one, Daniel. <laughs> Hello, Kathy. The hook is in the house. Cindy Monroe's in the house. Yeah, we see you, Carol. I see you on the YouTube side. So put that uh, hashtag hat. Not the hat. It's hashtag hat. That's how it takes it up automatically. And then we'll show David's uh, video in a little while. And I also got to thank my moderators that keeps this podcast going and the Facebook uh, group going. Tammy, Judy, Daniel, Starlene, Kathy, and Tanya from Portugal. Also, Jeff M. and Gloria watching us on the YouTube side. Thank you so much, guys. And to our lifetime contributor that we can really use now with all these stars and dates, Chris. Dona, you know? Yes, we sure could use them. Wouldn't it be great have them here? Hello, Ray D. Hello, Sand Dollar. I got to thank my main members. They all come from the Quest of Oak Island Facebook group. If you guys on the YouTube don't like Facebook, but if you like me, join our Quest group. There's a lot more information on there. YouTube's good for the videos and stuff, but all the factual stuff, Lordy 40, you got to come over to the Quest of Oak Island Facebook page. We're on... Yes, uh, guys, we have a great page, a great page. Yep, we're on uh, Facebook and YouTube, and I'll post maybe later the live video on Twitter. Our other platforms, which I touched on, was Twitch, Rumble. Pretty good on Discord. I post some screenshots as the show was playing last night. We had a good combo. It's only about four or five of us on the phone. I wish more would join and be on the phone so I can hear you. Instagram, we're doing pretty good. And mostly we're moving up on is Spotify for podcasters around the world. Apple, Google, iHeartRadio, Spotify, 
Pandora, Amazon podcast with Alexa. <laughs> Last night's episode, season 11, episode 17, piling on. But next week's episode. Episode 18 already. May the Norse be with you. The Brotherhood uncovers a new structure under the swamp, which is in some of my promos that I put on YouTube and the Quest Facebook group. And a new theory suggests the Vikings now work with the Templars to help them get to Oak Island. Lordy 40, holy Muyan. Hello, Andrea. Carol, you can't put hashtag hat in Facebook. It's only can be in the YouTube stream yard. Live chat. Hello, CJ. Daniel, you have a bad feeling about what? The Vikings with the Templars uh, combination? Already? Did I get all my thank yous in, Judy? I think you did. I got the membership. I got the patrons. All you guys. You also have Daniel and Charlotte's analysts on artifacts by Raymond. All right, Daniel, I hear you. All right, we're going to play a video. Tell me if you can see it. I posted it, and I made the video, but I don't know how it's going to come out during a live performance. Like I said, I want to thank David Burroughs. We'll talk about of one of the arche, uh, archaeologists, not Laird. They told him a little thing, and we'll discuss that after we play his video. Let me know if it comes out all right, guys. Ready? We're ready. Hello, everybody. Our member, Dave Burroughs and his wife, had a little ride today, Wednesday, March 6th, 2024, to the island. And um, here he is going across the causeway. No trespassing signs have not been posted at all. So, he met Gasu, Laird Niven. David seeing some of the sights with his wife. I appreciate him so much. We'll see you tonight on the podcast. He does have some news what an archaeologist told him about next season that we'll relay tonight. See you tonight, guys. Thank you, David. Have a good day. Bye-bye. There it is. You're famous now, David. Good job, David. And one of the archaeologists told him, and it wasn't Laird, that she is coming back next year. Season 12, baby, here we come. We're talking Miriam? No. Oh, okay. She's not around. So, David, there you go. It's always great to even get little clips like that. Even if it's the causeway, he was there today. It's just like people want to see that. I want to see that, you know, Judy? Right, John. It gives us the feeling like we're taking part in what's going on now. Right. We're not really showing nothing. We're not doing anything. It's just, okay, here's the island today on a Wednesday. And um, that's what that is, you know? Hello, Lewis. Right. Hello, Linda Shafto. Hello, Ashley. And they're still working on the tours, Ashley. They might have the tours in the summer. It's still in the planning stages. Like I told you before, 
nothing solid yet. They might open something up in the summer. The minute we know officially from the Oak Island Tours uh, website, their official uh, website, uh, that's the thing I got from my source. It's in the planning stages to open up in the summer. Of course, you always got Tony Sampson's boats to go around. You know what I mean, Judy? Right. And I'm sure that's always a fun thing to do. Right. So, but as far as the tours and they're cleaning up the, uh, where the lab is and bringing things over to the lab, you know, from the museum and everything, because the museum was just full of shelves and inventory and dates on baggies. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, look, I'm looking forward to it. So that's what a archeologist uh, told, uh, Mr. Burroughs, and if he wants to mention uh, her name in the chat, that's up to him. And uh, that's a good sign. You know, I don't know if Rick and Marty are going to sign a contract with History Channel for next year, but I bet you they will, and uh, we'll just keep it going. I'm sure they will. Hello, Diane Otto. No, Lewis, it wasn't... Uh, they didn't mention anything about season 12. This is another exclusive from David uh, Burroughs, who talked to a cast member today on Oak Island. Hello, Stephanie. All righty. All right, we're going to get Judy ready. But I want to hear from you guys. What really stuck out in your guys' heads? about last night's uh, video. Me, it was the professor, you know, this way, that way, this moon, that way, that miles and everything else, that the stone piles were from 1250. Lordy, lordy, holy mooyan. I don't know how he does it, but that's his job. I just want to get your guys' overall take on that. Then I'll have one more question, then we'll get into Judy's synopsis. Very impressive. Templar's baby. Not much left to discover. So I thought it was pretty informative last night, uh, Judy. Yes, I think for me, John, it was the fact that the um, beams in the bottom of the shaft were in such good shape. That did surprise me. Yep. The hook says Gary in the garden shaft. Scott says amazing piles were never moved. Yeah, I guess they were, what, six to eight feet high, every one of these piles? Like pyramids? Right. Yeah, and I'm going. Yeah. And all this time, nobody ever... Stripped them right down to nothing seems a little weird, but Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel says, I disagree with Professor Gaspani's findings. I challenge him to an arm wrestling competition. <laughs> They must love you, Daniel, when they're reading all our stuff on our page. You know what I mean? What the heck is this guy doing? Boy, that would be interesting to watch, wouldn't it? There's David. Info was amazing. I'm feeling anxious, like it's getting closer to something, even if it's not something physical, but just knowing what might happen. Yeah, just the history. 1,200 sounds a lot better than 1492, doesn't it, guys? Sure does. That's a big deal. <laughs> oh, if you guys don't know, he laughed and called me a bacala. <laughs> oh, oh, you guys cracked me up. <laughs> you want to tell us what bacala is? Oh, uh, no, you guys can Google that. Okay. <laughs> oh. Hi, Tammy Williams. Glad you're here. Yep. Evening all. Tammy just came in. 
also i got one general question for all the live members and members on facebook this is season 11. percentage wise from zero to a hundred percent now a hundred percent they find the treasure the show is over blah 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 so from a hundred from zero to a hundred percent after 11 years after all we've been through after all we've seen and not seen and all the theories we hear in and out in and out all the books that are written in and out in and out for 11 years what are your guys percentage wise of what they showed us and done on the show so far like me i'm 30 percent but 70 percent more that they have to go to me to know what the heck is going on they got me for about 30 percent out of 100 percent. so i want to know your guys percentage of 11 years of information overload on scans holes caissons information overload where you guys are at let me see it i'm at 20 percent, john linda's at 75 good good andre mm. 50. see what we're seeing here Diane, 50. John, 40. David, 60%. 40% to go. Patricia, 40%. Carol, 10%. Gregory, 70%. Scott, 33 and a third. <laughs> Good one, Scott. Pauline. Hello, Pauline. Pauline's with me, 30% satisfied, 70%. They got to show us a lot of things to tie things up. Not the treasure and all that, but you know what I'm talking about, right, Julie? Right, yeah. Do. Right, Lewis. Lewis started watching on season eight, so you let us know. Did you see Daniels? 0.00001%. Yeah, I saw it. I'm just seeing it now. Luann, 25. Daniel, 0001%. So he's got a long way to go. Tammy Williams is at 75%. Linda's at 30%. Lards, 99.9%. Betty Robinson, 100%, the show must go on. Yeah, but this is about the information they already gave us for 11 years. 100% would be you're all satisfied with everything. Or 50%, yeah, I go with the show 50%, but another 50%, they got to show me more. Not that the show, the show is always going to continue to go on until they find something. John Fisher with an 80%. No problem, Tammy. The hook, 15%. Thank you, Daniel. Lasagna's in the mail. <laughs> Tommy Templer, who who does these uh, little clips of us on your show, he's about 100% fed up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that was a good I'm one. I'm almost with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Andre. Andrea, 50% who, when, and 30% what, and 20% we may never know. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. And Gregory says he's thinking season 12 could be the deciding one. I like that season 13. Because that number 13 comes up all the time, all the way around. Yes, that would be a good place to stop it. John Fisher, he said 40. Okay. Stephanie, 40. Mm. 
But I like that uh, Tommy temper, 100% fed up. I love it. I don't know how these people come up with that stuff, but I love it. I don't either. Thank goodness we all have different senses of humor. Yep, yep. 13, Renee, you got it. All right, Judy. Well, we got over 100 screenshots to go through. Oh, wow. We got Daniel's analysis on artifacts. And get ready to give us your professional synopsis as I bring your picture up. Are you getting ready? I'm ready. We'll see how this goes, guys. All ready. Your picture's up, Judy. Whenever you're ready, it's your floor. Go ahead. Thank you, John. And we are season 11, episode 17, piling on. Episode 17 begins with Rick, Alex, and Jack returning to Oak Island after Hurricane Lee. They find the causeway intact, but the swamp has three to four feet of water in it. As they start the drainage pump, Rick says it will take one week to completely drain the swamp. They go on to the money pit area where they meet up with Roger from Dumas, and with a smile on his face, he informs them he has good news. There was no damage to the garden shaft during the storm, and they were able to dig the day before down to 99 feet. The plan now is to expose a seven-foot-high tunnel below the shaft. Later that afternoon, the team meets in the war room with their contact in Italy, Emiliano, who has arrived on the island, and Professor Gaspani, an expert, I can hardly say this word, but archaeo astronomer via video from Italy. The team had sent Professor Gaspani the exact coordinates of the five stone Cairns on lot 15 and of the stone triangle that was demolished by researchers in the past. By aligning these structures with the stars, the professor has been able to date them to 1250 AD, just 50 years later than Nolan's Cross. Professor Gaspani believes the five stone cairns and the stone triangle and Nolan's cross were made by the same people. Professor says this was a secret not everyone was to know. The five cairns line up with the sun and moon in the night sky, and the triangle aligns with the winter solstice. Professor Gaspani says, this is not a coincidence. As the team says goodbye to the professor, Marty informs him they will have more questions in the future. Also, when asked by Rick who made, who made these stone structures, professor's answer was simply, the Templars. The following morning, in the money pit area, the team continues the drilling of borehole F, 0.25, 0.8, 0.25, and 25, where they are going down 150 feet. A core hits the table, and unfortunately, upon opening it, they find nothing. Over on lot 15, Gary and Jack are metal detecting the stone cairns that were originally pyramid-shaped. Jack digs up a three-inch-long lead strip that Gary says is decorated and is medieval. They take it right to the lab. Back at the garden shaft, Scott gets an update from Roger. He informs Scott they have uncovered a large section of the tunnel at 100 feet down. As they go down the ladder, Roger says there is lots of large beams of wood. Scott sees planks 
12 to 14 inches across with rounded edges. Rick arrives and is happy with what he sees. Roger suggests that Gary do some metal detecting and Steve will do some GPS measurements that will finally give them the exact coordinates of the tunnel. A short time later, Gary's beeper goes off and he picks up a piece of iron wiring that Roger says is nothing Dumas would use, so this could be original. Gary offers to help Steve with his measurements and the results of which we will get later. Back at Borehole F 25.8.25, a core comes up in which they find lots of wood in the bottom and firm soil on the top. Terry believes they are on the edge of something. A second core comes up from 171 feet down, and upon examination, they see they have hit bedrock. They are disappointed, but Charles reminds them there are more areas to drill. An exciting new day begins at the garden shaft as the Dumas team brings up a plank about five feet long with rounded sides, and they can see it's being cut with an adze. Terry finds no metal in it, and Rick states that the first horizontal dig is yet to come into the tunnel. The episode ends in the lab where the team meets with Laird and Emma to get results of testing on the piece of lead from lot 15. Emma informs them this piece matches up with a two to three inch long lead rod with a spiral design found on lot 13 in 2021. Chris McFarland from the university tested the piece from lot 15 and he says it looks to be Scandinavian. Doug stressed they need to follow up on the Norse or Viking connection who were on these shores pre-Columbian, as were the Templars. Did they know each other? Join us next week to hopefully get an answer to this question, fellow questers. And in the meantime, stay safe, please. Very professionally done on a weekly basis, Judy. Fantastic. Thank you so much. You're welcome, John. I got through it. Thank goodness. Yep. Did good. Also, everybody out there in the world, the synopsis will be printed out in the Quest of Oak Island Facebook page for all to read. And I thank her so much for that. You're so welcome. especially for the people that can't read and can't see and, you know, they put English on or whatever, the foreign people, and they get a good point-to-point -point view of what the show actually showed last night without actually not seeing it, you know what I mean? Right, John. I mean, there's a lot of people with us that don't get the show yet, so I'm I'm so happy that it helps everybody. It sure makes my my day for sure. Yep, all right. Well, let's get into these screenshots since the synopsis is fresh in our mind, or really my mind, <laughs> <laughs> before I forget. Ten after seven, we're doing good. Been on for about a half an hour. So we're good. Here we go. Well, it started out with them driving this Ford SUV back to the island after that supposedly hurricane hit the island. Wonder how the island did. Alex, Rick, no way. 
Wow. It's in the back seat. I try to find out how deep that one Nolan Stone looking twin brother in the swamp. But I looked and looked and looked. I don't know how deep that was, how much Billy dug muck out of that. For Fred Nolan not to see that huge granite, whatever it is, Nolan's cross boulder in the swamp. You know what I'm guys, you know guys what I'm saying? I do, John, and it, it must have been really deep at one time. And Mary, and maybe Billy did some digging that we didn't get to see. Yeah. Yep. Well, Alex said, well, the causeway's still there. I'm glad they didn't emphasize the storm, 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 storm. They just gave us some screenshots and they moved on. I like that, Judy. You know, they didn't give us 20 minutes of damage on the uh, inland and island. You know what I mean? Yes, that was nice. Get it over with quick. We knew that everything was pretty much okay and that's all we needed. Yeah, we knew the swamp would be full. So they gave us a couple of windy and wave shots here that I took. Province took a little hit. And now they approach the swamp. And Rick just gets out of his SUV and just starts it up like it's all gassed up, ready to go. Right. I wonder how that happens. I was wondering why the pump was still there. You know, you just hook that up in the back of your dump truck or your truck and you just haul it away. They left it there during the storm because you know they weren't going to use it during the storm like the garden shaft. Those guys stayed there and made sure they pumped it out during the storm. But this thing in front of the swamp, they just left it there. Yeah, it's amazing. I guess they were not worried about it being blown away. That's probably too heavy to blow away, but I don't know. Maybe those rocks could have hit it or something if the rocks hit the waves and the waves hit the rocks and the rocks moved. I don't know. What do I know? <laughs> yeah, that was strange that it started up right away. Okay, Linda, have a good Bible study. Hello, Dan McSwan. Hashtag hat. There you go. He's cooking. There's three or four feet of water in there. You got it. So I'm figuring there's just three or four feet of water in there. Well, that boulder's buried now, right? Yes, exactly. So that's what I'm looking for, guys. So help me out during the week if you're watching the program about that boulder in the swamp. If we can get a little heads up. So if there's three or four feet of water... That boulder's completely covered up. Now they're going to go check the money pit. I'm still wondering what that steel frame is there to the right. Haven't figured that one out yet. I think they just put it there to bug us. No, that's all I can think of. Like they haven't gone horizontal yet. So I think they may be making a horizontal steel frame to hold the, the, uh, the soil in you know, before they put the planking down. So they put it together on top and they piece it down the shaft because that's not going to fit in the shaft. And they put it back together when they go horizontal. That's the only thing I can think of, guys. What do you think? I think that's a possibility for sure. Andre, they stopped filming in uh, a while ago. Middle of November. Something right. Like that. That's usually then. Yeah, usually in November. Yep. If, the, if the weather's good. All right. Now they're checking out the uh, garden shaft. A lot of checking in the beginning. And they actually dug down to 99 feet. So the top of that tunnel, supposed tunnel or whatever it's going to be called, is to the top that you see is 99 feet. I'm 
so this is when they're saying the seven foot tunnel is nearly 100 feet deep yeah 99 100 that's close yeah I mean, I was surprised, John. It's so clear. You can clearly see that there is something there. Yep. The ceiling, I guess. And what we're saying last night on Discord, if that ceiling was collapsed, those boards would be every which way, up, down, sideways, you know, pointy, not like a plank, like a deck, you know? Right. Exactly. I did not expect it to look like that. Not unless the inside of the tunnel is full with blue clay and it just kept it open like that but then again muyan holy muyan i don't know what they showed with that pink stuff so they got me all confused right no cj that's not the little elevator they use that big steel frame i'm talking about the bigger one not the one that they will show at the end of these screenshots that they brought the wood up that's a different little elevator they use for materials and supplies you'll see the big one behind this one you see the front one with the cables on top cj and that's the one they bring supplies up and down but behind that is the bigger steel frame h frame that i'm talking about if you follow me if not well i tried Right. No, you're clear, John. We can, I can see it anyway. I'm sure they can okay. as well. And I just took a picture of that big steel frame in one, two, two sections so far welded. Just trying to figure out what that was. So still come up empty, guys. We'll get it, though. We're persistent. You know what I mean? They better show us what it is, John. <laughs> or at least tell us. No problem, CJ. We try to please everybody here. <laughs> and over the years, the OHO stone, the circle and the dot, the gold. I don't have to tell you guys, this stuff has been drilled in my brain. here we go with nolan's cross you can see underneath and all the tangents he goes off with that could be dr spino's timeout room i'm going to call him dr spino today okay we're going to put him in that steel h frame And this is when he's saying before last year and they told me this was important that the cross was dated 1200 a.d i told you that last year last season if you go back and watch my podcast they thought it was very important and i tried to get an interpreter to get them to come on and i was sort of shocked that they did it on the show but i couldn't find an interpreter for him to come on our podcast so I'm glad they did it. Yes, thank goodness they did. It worked out well. Right. And this is just an overhead shot of where the stone piles are in a triangle that were like pyramid shaped. Did you see how high they were? Six to six to eight feet high, I think. I read someplace or I heard something. I don't know. Yes. Yes. Right in there somewhere. Yeah. The remains of five stone piles located on lot 15. There they be. More stones. They played with a lot of stones over here. You know what I mean? Sure is a lot of stones on that island. And they were documented by the surveyor, like I was, Fred Nolan. We marked down everything, benchmarks, uh, maps, of course, all written in longhand, Judy. We didn't have no GPS. We didn't have no pocket computers. It was all on paper. 
And I bet you wish you were starting out now. Dr. Spino says, yeah, six to seven feet high. Imagine that. Yes, isn't that something? That's amazing that they can tell that. I mean, how? How do they know that six and seven feet high? I looked in Croker's book, but they had, must have info because if it was that high, when Fred Nolan was there, he would have marked that height. You know what I mean, Judy? Right. You would think he would have anyway. Yeah, that's what I would do as a surveyor. The height, the width, everything. Hello, Brenda Ruback. And this, I guess was the stone triangle before the excavator man, I'm not going to mention his name because everybody gets upset, ripped the money pit apart. Gary, I don't know if the stones are from the ship ballast. They didn't say. Could be. Daniel says he'll translate for $500 per hour. Oh, okay. It pays just as good as this YouTube channel. <laughs> so here's where the stone piles were located, drawn out. Yeah, Gary, could be. Ballast stones. I wish they put some kind of mason mark on them or something, like in the ship, maybe... Ton of them mark them, but probably not. They just threw them in there for ballast. You know what I mean, Judy? I would th think they did. Yes. All this stuff is for our buddy Chris Dona, that he could have been just on here now with me explaining all this stuff in detail in the simplest form. But no, you just got me that is dazed and confused. <laughs> <laughs> well john i think a lot of us are for sure this isn't easy to understand the sun rising and the sun setting and the people of the moon the points of the moon rising and setting were constructed long ago according to alignments and a very sh 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 secret operation <laughs> Okay, Scottish digger, we'll be here for a while. And this is when he's saying, in the 1200 to 50 AD, <laughs> this is the stone the piles. That the Northern Cross is from a 1200. The stone the piles are 50 years older because of the moon go over the sky a la mori. Isn't that a song? The, the moon over the sky in the pie. Moon over the... Something Should like be that. a song. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the stone the piles, like he says, from a 200, 1250. Andrei Ongapaski Andre Okapaski, come back on the TV. And Madio is the interpreter. Those are stones that look like a ravioli. He's on tonight. He's got that wine going. I guess. The stone, the triangle, the original map of the stone, the temple. Yeah, that's it, Andrea. When the moon hits your eyes like a big pizza pirate, Samori. La da 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 da. That's it. She knows what I was talking about. She did. Yeah. I did too, but I couldn't remember the words. When the moon hits your eyes like a big pizza pie, that's a more. Daniel says I needed a bottle of wine when I was watching this segment. <laughs> <laughs> and also, 
this is stone is triangle so drilled the rock so obviously is no longer here Dean Martin hi Gloria everybody loves somebody sometime and the sunset uh, at the winter celeste uh, on the same day you got the sunset the celeste you got the sunrise the celeste you got the west and you got the east uh, Johnny, Dan you're cute. Daniel says, oh, what's the matter with you? That's a star. <laughs> now nah, it looks it looks like a raviolis. <laughs> and uh, like I say, uh, who knew both astronomy and geometry? Oh, I know dot to dot. He knows that geometry. He's got lines and figures all over the place. You go see dot to dot. You go see the Michael Brennan. And the Oak Island Research. They do all of these numbers. So uh, from uh, 1200 to 13, there were people by arranging these stones in the piles of stones, a capiche? You capiche, Daniel? And even the, the nightly, the auras, the knights, uh, the ones are with the cross, you know, the, the ones with the cross, with the cross. They do look like salamis, Daniel. They do look like salamis. The genuine salami. I like the genuine salami. I like the heart of the salami. Is that the Masonic ring on his finger? Mm. But that is the finger. There's a one, a two, a three, a four. A gold finger, a, a merry the ring. What do you get? The engagement, the ring, the what teen ring, and then you get the suffering. He's got his thumb out, you're out. There's the Nolan's across, the stone, the piles, the stone, the triangle on the bottom. You guys see? Yes, we can see. Okay. Very, very good. Kumasikam, uh, Oka Island, Kumasikam. Is it uh, Oka Island? Yes, sir. And they think uh, I'm right. What are these dates? The conclusion is, I say, is the Templars. Don't you understand my uh, broken English? I says the Templars. I didn't say pirates. I didn't say anything else. I said the Templars. Take care, Dave. He didn't. He didn't bat an eye, did he? Come right out. It's Templars. And now to the sausage table. He's pointing to where the bedrock should be on this crazy, crazy map. Look at that map. You know I love map. Unbelievable. I lived with my Italian grandmother until I was 10 years old. She was downstairs, I was upstairs. Pure Italian. Uh, and other brothers Italian. Pure Italian. No in between. And that's how I learned how to make pasta. Wow. And Terry says, we're going back to RF1, Judy, which we pulled up some PVC pipe last week, I'm pretty sure. Right, Judy? Yes, we did. So so they must be going to just 
drill, um, drill just a little bit over a little yeah. bit. Yeah, we'll see what they come up with. The water testing it also. And, and near the stone in the piles, uh, Gary finds a bit of lead. It's like a lead strip. Lot the 15 showing you that little red dot whereabouts there are. And that's about in the middle of those piles, Judy. Yes. Lots of piles, too. And Bill, was the PVC pipe, was that Portuguese? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you... that's not. <laughs> and then Jack arrived at the site of the stone Karens. Oh, wow. Wow. And I like these old photos they showed, uh, Judy. I'm sorry, say that again, John. No way. Oh. <laughs> and I like this photo I just put up of the oh, right. new stones that we just saw. But an older photograph of the piles of stones. But this looks big. Wow. This looks like a like almost like the circle, thirteen foot circle. This thing here I'm seeing now. It does, doesn't it? So it's like okay, they show some old pictures. I'll take them. I'll take them. So they had previous knowledge of these stone piles, not only with Fred Nolan's survey but with photographic evidence, Judy. Right. So why didn't they look into them sooner? They were first surveyed by Fred Nolan in the 1960s. And I know where people are coming from. They are like basketball size. They do look like ballast stones that would fit in the bottom of a ship. But then I'm not no rock or stone expert by no means but those things seem like a size that you can maybe put in an oxen cart and take them from the ship reuse ship wood because the only thing they can come to the island is little skittles or scuttles that uh, a big ship couldn't even get close to the island you know what i mean judy right exactly yep it would have to be small or the stones came out of the tunnel or the shaft who built the garden shaft well somebody dug the garden shaft out to, to 90 feet you know who are those people right that's what we want to know hmm. but I'm, i love old pictures and i never saw these stone pictures before have you guys seen these stone pictures before these piles of stones and i got a bunch of no, books I and have what about you, Judy? I have not seen them, John. This is interesting, especially in black and white. And again, this is what Daniel said, between five and seven feet high. Unbelievable. Boy, those are big. Yep. And then we got this lead piece that they found. Good job, Scottish. Renee says one side of the island was very deep. And nobody's seen them. I haven't seen them, so. And if these were created in the 13th century, you think that's true? Look at that. That looks like a bowling ball right there. So they it does, it does. They got a good thing of, uh, they could be ballast stones. They seem all about the same size, you know, different shapes. You would think if they're building a tunnel and hitting the stones or smashing them and getting pieces out, I don't know. I would see them more of a rugged stone coming out of the ground, but what do I know? <laughs> Daniel says it looks like a giant peach pit, and it does actually, doesn't it? 
You know what the look like, the Daniel? It looks like it's a big amita ball. <laughs> look at the size of that amita ball, Daniel. Look at the amita ball. Too much of cheese on it. You put the parmesan, the cheese, you do too much of cheese on the meatball. ball. Will you get the more sauce on that meatball? ball? Will you, Daniel? <laughs> Ashley says, I thought it looked like a rotten Cheeto. She does. She sees a lot of Cheetos, Ashley. I'm starting to worry about her. <laughs> Here they are putting the pump in. You see that thing to the right is a water pump, submersible water pump. At the depth of some 100 feet, they got to keep it going, keep it primed, keep it going. You see that pump to the right, that black pump, submersible. Yes, very clearly. And then I was looking at the wood that I showed last night. I didn't see the rounded edges, but maybe it was so buried in the mud and that wedge that they took out that the bark is still on the outside of the wood. That's going to be very, very interesting to get dated, guys. What do you think? I know I couldn't see it in this picture, but when they actually brought it up top, I could see rounded edges. Yep. And I saw the one in the pit that I'll show you that the wedge to make the beams tighter still has the bark on it. Wow. So one of these planks came out of here. And at the end of this show, it shows it coming out of the uh, garden shaft. Pauline, they don't know yet. Beneath the, beneath the, beneath the wood should be a seven-foot-high tunnel. We haven't made it that far yet. And Duma says he never saw whatever he's pointing to. And I forgot what he said. The upland, I was looking for round logs, not planks, but the planks, you're seeing the face up, but on the bottom, it'll look like a half moon because the it's all rounded and some have bark on it. That's what really got my ears perk, perked, you know, Judy, and they still say there's bark on these wood. What the heck? Really, John, it, it amazes me that the bark would still be there after all these years. Well, they got to get a date on this stuff. But then again, is it reused? Then the, the one guy that emailed me, then they ran out of wood, even though a lot of wood up there. They got wood from uh, Portugal because the British was running out of wood. So I don't know. We got to see. For sure. You think there's a there would have been enough forest up there. They'd never run out. Well, if there were ship repairing, Wood goes fast. Right, exactly. And this is the picture sort of I was showing yesterday. The top part's flat, but underneath the mud, you can see it's circled or beveled on both edges, if you look it on the bottom. And that's sort of what the board came out with, a, like a dog ear on top, a dowel. which the ones I saw yesterday look more square to me that I showed you guys. So I'm wrong, but you don't know. We try to speculate on everything. So until they show us, until they tell us and show us clear pictures, then we correct ourselves. You know, Judy? Right, John. I'm anxious to find out the date or not. Yep. Gary says if it's round, it's old. And underneath this thing, as we see here, it's got to be the top of the ceiling. And there they are. Not sideways yet, still straight down. We got a lot of seasons to go if this this pace, you know, Judy? Oh uh, yeah, John. They show us it, it all so slowly, and I'm sure it could be done faster. And there we go. Look at that. And there's that piece with the bark on the outside as a wedge. I couldn't believe it. Wow. I did not notice that, John, until now.
Rick coming down. There's his feet. For all the girls that like his feet, there you go. <laughs> I'll stick with the face, thank you. Yeah, this is for the feet people. I guess there's people that like feet. I have no idea. So I said, well, <laughs> when I took this picture and it said Rick coming down, all the ladies will go wild. Look, it's Rick's feet. Look, look. So there you go, guys. <laughs> I'll leave it on for a while so you guys can screenshot it or whatever. You know, because the whole world sees this, Judy, so you don't know. No, that's true, John. There are probably some out there. Here's Scott. Question. Would there be an entry point to lower the planks down and drag them into the installation part? It has to be. You know, off tunnels to put supplies in as you're working down there under a flame. How do you see down there? set a fire, put the flame in the torch, whale oil. The heck do I know? I can't see now when I got the 100 watt LED light bulbs. <laughs> <laughs> You're in bad shape, John. You know, how did they see this in the year th uh, 1300? How did they see? How did they dig? Well, look at all the castles they built and everything. So you just look at the past and look what they did. Digging a hole in the mud seems like a simple thing for them, you know, Judy? It certainly would be because those guys, have, if it's the Templars, they've dug so many tunnels all around the world. Mm. Andre says maybe the stone piles are Indian burials. We find no Indian stuff at all. Like I was saying I last night, I was saying like that on Discord last night, Judy. Places that Indians or the Mi'kmaq have been on. We haven't found one arrow point. You know, they had a hunt on the island. Great place to hunt. No causeway. A bunch of deer on the island. Get the guys together. Force the deer towards the water. And there's your winter uh, coat. And you're eating venison. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. Yeah, it makes no sense. That island seems to be so clean of that stuff. It's real. There it is. It's not an interpretation. It's real. And this is the plank. You can see the roundness on the right side. And you see where they dowled it out. It's flat. Then it's got another upper lip about an inch. I mean, it's got to be cleaned out. And this is what one of the planks looked like when they took it up and over the garden shaft. Could be, Lewis. Could be. And then I had to get Steve and uh, I never saw him in the tunnel in the garden shaft. So I had to get my buddy, Steve Guptel, a surveyor. I had to get him in the tunnel. I haven't seen uh, Doug in there yet. No. Nope, Scott. Didn't see no scanner tags for Whole Depot or Lowe's. Nope, we're good on that. And here's Steve. We got Steve in there. There's that piece of uh, metal Gary found. Go ahead, Judy. Uh, Steve's looking pretty serious about it all, but I think he was so excited about being able to get the exact coordinates for the tunnel. Right, you're right on the spot, you know. And then you can extend this line, extend that line. Hopefully, that's where it is, but it's all guesswork. We know the tunnel's there, but does it rear off to the back? Does it rear off to the left, to the right, after this three feet? Who knows, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a big help. That's what Muyan was supposed to show us. <laughs> they failed us. Muyan, you failed me, Muyan. Uh, And there's that piece. And I just want to show you, this is what bedrock looks like. You got all the dirt on the sausage table. The sausage table. And open the eyes of Goomba. 
when they hit the bedrock, uh, the bedrock is all a white, the heart of granite, the, the bedrock. Uh, well, thank, thank you, John, because I didn't know what that looked like. That is the bedrock. You can't go uh, no more. Sometimes in the bedrock, they cave it out and they make a very good treasure chamber. But uh, that's uh, what the bedrock looks like. So I wanted to know, maybe you people don't know, because it was on the quick bedrock. And of course, they detected precious metals in this area towards the baby blob. Could be, Dan. Could be. Okie dokie, Roger. And here is the timber they took out. And there's the carriage that's hooked up to the crane that they bring all supplies in and out for 100 feet. But imagine doing this by hand up rickety ladders, flame lights, and I don't know how they got rid of the water. They had the flood waters, flood tunnels, obviously turned off. You know what I mean, guys? Yeah, John, it, it is so miraculous, really, that they could do it at all. You know, how did, they didn't have no water pumps. Right. And they're down over a hundred feet. Very, very interesting. Unbelievable. There they are, a hundred feet below. And there's the plants yeah, Andrew, coming up. Andrew says, I wish Dan B. was still around to see. I'm sure he's there on the island, I'm sure. And uh, uh, I'm sure he knows what's going on, don't you, John? Right, but I guess the team don't talk to him anymore. That's what he told me. Uh, oh, that's sad. Yep, Bernie. But I'm sure he can watch the show. Yeah, notched on both ends. And sure, if you wanted to. I get in touch with him once in a while. If you wanted me to post him something on uh, Messenger, I can just show him whatever he wants to show, you know what I mean? Whatever he needs. Right. Right. Exactly. Renee says, are the Templars paying off Muyan? Are they paying him off? I don't know. <laughs> There's that board hitting the surface. And at this time, again, guys, I'm going to play the video with Raymond. This is from Daniel Spino and Charlotte Wheatley, their weekly analysts on artifacts. And then we'll finish up the screenshots, watch a video, give away a hat, and go from there. So let me know. We're going to watch it now. Okay, guys? Sounds good. It's about four minutes and 20 seconds. Here we go. Season 11, episode 17 piling on artifact and feature analysis. In last night's episode, Piling On, we are taken to the war room where the Oak Island team is meeting with archaeoastronomer Adriano Gaspani and his interpreter Michael Amadio. Professor Gaspani was asked if he could find a correlation between the stone triangle that was located on the south shore and what Fred Nolan called the pirate piles that were located on lot 15. Gaspani begins with the stone piles. He suggests that these five stone piles were placed there using astronomical calculations, using the rising and setting of the sun and moon. He suggests that these alignments only appear every 18 and one half years. He states that because there are so many alignments, it appears that the formation could have been formed in 1250 AD. Dr. Gaspani suggests that the Knights Templar were behind the formation, which the compendium believes is based on his past research that involves the theory that the Order of the Temple used such alignments when building churches in Europe. Professor Gaspani continued with his presentation, now focusing on the stone triangle. Gaspani says, 
Because the stone triangle is no longer there, he used the calculations given by the Oak Island team. Gaspani explains that there are stone alignments in the triangle that show the sunrise and sunset at the winter solstice on the same day. Gaspani goes on to explain that he believes that whoever did this was a navigator who knew both astronomy and geometry. Gaspani then speculates that people from Europe came to Oak Island in the 1200s-1300s and codified a message by arranging stones and piles of stones in an astronomically significant way that was not used by common people. He suggests it was a secret that not everyone was supposed to know about and puts forth the Templars as possible builders. Why the Knights Templar, at the height of their power, would do this in the Oak Island area in 1200-1250 AD is still uncertain. The scene shifts to Lot 15, where the stone piles discovered by Fred Nolan were located, and the remnants remain. Metal detectorist Gary Drayton and Jack Begley search the area for any possible finds. Gary records a hit and uncovers a piece of lead. It is described as decorative in appearance and could be related to other pieces of lead that the Oak Island team has found previously. The piece was bagged and tagged and will be taken to Emma Culligan in the lab for further analysis. Dating of lead is difficult because in most cases lead was used and used for hundreds of years, so narrowing down a specific date of deposit is almost impossible. We were then taken to the garden shaft where the Duma team has been working since the brief delay from Hurricane Lee. Duma has reached the top of the tunnel that runs below the garden shaft. Gary Drayton is brought in to see if he can detect any artifacts. He gets a hit and identifies it as iron. It appears to be some sort of nail or perhaps pin that will be sent to Emma for testing. Another hit is made and Gary says it is metal and it has a similar look as the other piece. Later the team starts to take out pieces of the top of the tunnel and notice that the wood has been worked by the use of an ads. The wood samples will be sent out for further testing. Our analysis concludes at the new lab, where archaeometallurgist Emma Culligan meets with the team to provide her analysis of the lead piece found at the stone piles on lot 15. Emma echoes the fact that the lead is extremely hard to date, but she said it was a near compositional match for another piece of lead found in 2021 on lot 13. That piece is spiral-shaped in appearance. Dr. Chris McFarlane had previously analysed the spiral piece and said it may have originated from eastern Scandinavia. No date was given, and according to Dr. McFarlane's verbiage, it sounded like there were other possibilities that were not mentioned in this clip. This led to speculation of the Vikings being on Oak Island, and curiously a map was shown detailing the settlements of the Vikings as Iceland, Greenland, and New Brunswick. This was an error since there were no known Viking settlements in New Brunswick and should have been listed as Newfoundland. Until next week's episode. Good day from the compendium. There you go. Thank you, Daniel and Charlotte, for their analysis. Very, very good. Good job, guys. Dr. Spinal and Charlotte Wheatley. <laughs> Alrighty, like I said, there's some pictures. You go to the Oak Island Compendium to see the direct pictures and how he's uh, clarifying what they're saying. I just put on Daniel's and Charlotte's picture and go to their blog. Please support them 100% like I do. Don't forget, hashtag hat. Your ass cut on the wood. Yep, Kerry agrees. Rick, I think he was not looking, but I think he was sniffing the wood. What do you guys think? I agree. Remember how Dan showed him how to uh, how the wood smells? Yes, I, I remember that, and that's what I thought when I was watching Rick. Hmm. Watch your fingers. Yep. Big old support log. Huge. Now, was that the width of the tunnel? That should give them the width. It was laying down flat. So I think that width of that plank is the width of the tunnel. What do you think, guys? What's that, about five feet? 
It looks like it to me, John. You know what and I mean? And that could very well be. You know what I mean, Julie? A Julie, a Judy. Right. <laughs> could they get the Ark of the Covenant through there, though? So I think that's the width of the tunnel because they're on top. And then when they get to the side, if that's coming out eight foot beams, well, there you go. You know what I mean? Right. I'm sure we'll see more of them. Yep. They're all looking at this beam. It's a big deal. Get it tested. Shows you how big it is. And then there goes Rick. We still have horizontal drilling. Yep. Yep. Must be fully exposed and inspected. I guess the mining people in Canada they come and inspect before they put the next section down so it's all safe, which is good for everybody involved. You know what I mean? It is. We certainly not want anything to happen to anybody. Yeah. Dan says, what if it's not the tunnel in a wood platform that they found in the original money pit? Then we just keep on drilling. We keep on digging. They stick caissons all right. over the place. Same old, same old merry-go-round. But we hope this is going to show something. Maybe that was there, not there, a void, something, some crumbs for us. We're all with you, John. The show may be something like this. That they showed us a million times in 11 years. And he's congratulations to everybody. They got that wood out and in to the workers. And this is where they're bringing that stuff Gary and Jack found at the stone piles. There it is. You see the date there, September 14th, 2023. Yes. So you know they're in September. Right. Exactly. And it was... Decent weather, too. Yeah. And then this is when Doug asked for any kind of lead artifacts. And this is where Emma says, yep, one from 2021, a twisted lead rod, or what does Ashley call them? A cheese it I don't know. <laughs> Cheeto, a Cheeto. Yes, there you go. There's the Cheeto. A rotten Cheeto. There you go. And there it is. I always wondered what that thing was when I posted it. What the hell is that? It looks like a screw or something. You know what I mean? Right, exactly. Unbelievable. All right, we got 20 entries so far. Hashtag hat. And this is the last screenshot I have. And we're going to watch a video from October 2023. And then we're going to see who wins a quest hat. And then we're done for tonight, guys. Sounds good, John. All right, here we go. Tell me if you can see the video, hear the video. It's about another three or four minutes. And a little after 8 o'clock, we'll uh, head out. Here we go, guys. October 2023. Last one we shown was September of 2023.
fantastic. I want to thank Muyan Osprey for all those drone videos over last spring and summer. Just a fantastic thing to do. All righty. It's beautiful, John, and I think those are videos we will treasure for years to come. Yep. Let me get the uh, hashtag hat up. Share screen. Share screen. Alrighty. Okay. Share screen. Mm-hmm. Give away two. Oh, boom. All right. We got 20 entries tonight. Great. Hey, everybody. Good luck. Everybody put their hashtag hat in the chat. And here we go. If you've won a hat before, and I can remember, we'll redraw, give it to somebody that has not won a hat in our group. And I'll mail it out tomorrow morning. Give me your information at Quest of Oak Island at AOL.com. What's your address nice and clearly printed out or pm me in facebook if you're in the group and if it's international for stamps.com what is it judy i need your phone number otherwise they will not mail it international right doesn't make sense but <laughs> that's what you gotta do yep oh we got 22 entries two more got in very good mm -hmm. good all right here we go judy three all righty two one, bingo. Patricia is the winner. Congratulations, Patricia. Don't forget the picture, please. I think she's in the chat tonight, isn't she? Yeah. Somewhere. I think I saw her. Is she on YouTube? Yes. And don't forget, you got that email address, or if you're in my Facebook group on Quest, PM me there, or Quest of Oak Island at AOL.com, and we'll get it right out to you. Right out to you. So there we go. We got winners in this group, guys. We're all winners, aren't we, John? Yep. Yep, we want a pitcher. All righty. And don't forget, uh, next week, episode 18, May the Norse Be With You. Next Wednesday, you'll be with me and Judy. I'll see you guys pre-show Tuesday, 645. Any changes, anything going out of the normal, uh, hit that notification bell. I try to let everybody know what's going on. So far, we're going to be doing our Tuesday, Wednesdays. But things can change in a heartbeat. So I'll let you know. So, Judy, if you want to uh, button it up on your end and say your goodbyes, and uh, then I'll say my goodbyes and tutalo. Okay. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. You always make life better for me. And uh, I have to admit, I'm feeling a whole lot better than when I came on. So, everybody, have a good week. Enjoy Oak Island next Tuesday. And I will see you on Wednesday night. I love you all. Stay safe and good night. Good night, Johnny. Okay. Thank you, uh, Judy. I'll be talking to you later. Okay. Bye-bye. All right, everybody. That's it for the show tonight, Wednesday's podcast. Like I said, I'll see you pre-show Tuesday at 645. Uh, and what do I say all the time? What do I say all the time? Can you guys say this with me by the time we go into 15 years on this uh, quest of Oak Island? Remember, members, always go forward. You may get a setback in your life, but just believe in yourself. Believe in your dreams, no matter how old you are. Keep them dreams going.
for tomorrow's a never given. Never. With this crazy world we live in, I just shake my head. So as my friend Jan says, you keep smiling. You never know what that other person is going through. And like Judy and Jan says, you stay safe. And I also say you got to stay strong. You got to stay positive all the time. Get that negativity away from you. Have that positivity flowing in your veins physically and mentally. If not, there's a lot of help out there to help you achieve that. Thank you for joining me and Judy tonight. Like I said, you'll see me Tuesday pre-show. Maybe early if something comes up, comes up, I'll let you know. Watch the chat. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you. Take care. And bye-bye. <music>